Welcome back to the Sansui 907MR, still vertical. <laughs> um, this is part two of the restoration where we're going to continue on. The amp module is finished for the left channel, but I thought while it's out, let's get to that rear board. Uh, have a look at those binding posts that were a bit loose. I don't think we're going to be able to tighten those, but... I don't know. We'll see what we can do. But this is the overall sort of protection board. I can't get much in the way of light in here. So forgive me for how limited this is. But uh, this relay here is the main protection relay for the speaker output. So these normally get um, oxidized or corroded a little bit. So we're going to attempt to pull this out and have a look at it. And yeah, I'll show you how I normally clean protection relays, assuming we can even get it open, which is still debatable. Um, the binding posts are just here, and as you can see, they are a little loose, but they do have Loctite on them, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do anything with these. Yeah, anyway, let's um, pop this relay out and we'll have a look at it. All right, so the speaker protection relay is out. Just having a bit of peek at it. I started to lift the bitumen on one side and she already wants to open. So uh, we're going in. So yeah, this isn't normal, this bitumen. This is something that they've added for vibration reduction. Like I said, I don't really buy into it but it's here, so we have to work with it. Now, normally they have little tabs on each side of this cover and you gotta sort of just pry it open. This one seems to be cooperating. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. They normally don't open this easily. So, I don't know if you can see that. Got sort of, yeah, just bitumen on each side. That was really easy to open. Normally they put up a really big fight. And these contacts look... Wow. I don't know what sort of relay this is, but... So I'm just inspecting this relay. Trying to get as close as I can just to give you guys a bit of a better look at these pads and what we're dealing with. So you can see some pitting on those contacts. So these appear to be gold-plated. Um, but there's definitely some damage there from arcing. So yeah, we're going to clean this up. Uh, normally I would use deoxid red and then deoxid gold to protect it afterwards. We'll start with the red and see if we can clean up some of this oxidization and we'll go from there. Now, you might be asking why I don't just replace this relay. And it's a good question. I normally would. Um, a, I didn't know what relay was in this unit. And B, I don't think I would find a relay these days that would match the quality of this one. So, <laughs> we are just going to clean it. And I've found, unless it's from like a 60s amplifier, I generally don't need to replace these just giving it a good clean is usually good enough so yeah i normally just get in here very gently with a little brush and this is the brush that comes in the deoxid kit with the little bottles these work pretty well so i don't really have any issues using this on really badly oxidized relays, I have used those fiber optic pens that have like the little bristles and they work really well for getting rid of bad oxidization, but they will scratch off plating as well. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, so I normally just um, scrub the pads a little bit, get rid of anything that I can get rid of without abrasive scraping 
and then put on the gold and we're good to go. So I'll show you what this looks like at the end and you can tell me if it looks any better or not. Well, I don't know about you, but I think these look way better. You um, can definitely see the plating again. Um, I don't know if oxidization is technically accurate with gold, but it's more like a tarnishing, I think, or just carboning, carbon buildup. So yeah, I'm happy to call this done. I'm gonna put this relay back in and I think we're gonna move on to the uh, preamp board. So yeah, oh, actually no, sorry. There is one other thing I've got to show you. There are some factory bodge jobs done on this board. Like some, I think they're Nishikon caps that have just been shoved in here at the last minute. So yeah, that's interesting and a little disappointing to see that on a production amplifier, but it's not unusual. So yeah, I thought you just want to see that as well. Let's get this back in and move on to the preamp. I'm sure it doesn't need repeating, but I'm gonna say it again. This amp is freaking heavy and it is an absolute nightmare to move around. So I've put some wood blocks under each corner to lift it up while we take off this face plate where the preamp is. So we can start working on that and it's a bit hard to video this. So I'm gonna try my best. There are screws on the sides, both sides. There are three on the top and that looks like everything i hope and this tape is blocking the screw head so we'll have to cut around that i don't want to peel it off because it's got this bitumen here as well so let's just um see what happens and hope that this thing just comes apart There is a, a lot going on in here. So I've got the face plate dropped down and it's just, yeah. I'm not sure how much I want to mess around in this area. I wanted to clean all the switch gear and I think we can give them a bit of a spray. But honestly, there's nothing really wrong with any of it that I can hear anyway. And it's not hard to get into this area again if I need to do more work on it other than like the loudness and tone control switches, which I think will give a, a proper clean. Um, yeah, so the volume is an Alps potentiometer. It is massive. There are six individual pots stuck down on a copper face plate, and it just doesn't do it justice from a camera like how big this thing is. It is like that long. <laughs> So all the way down, yeah, pretty wild. Um, we have Alps switch gear, all made in Japan as well. There's many of them. I have seen other people that have had to clean these and tear them down. I don't really want to go there at this point because you're just poking the bear and you could end up breaking one of these very unobtainium switches. So we're not going to do that for now. So we're gonna change these two pots. Um, all that we need to do is desolder the legs, drop them out, swap them over, and clean the switches and put this back together. So let's um, keep going. Really running out of bench space here, but... Um, I have the trim pots out and just confirming that they are indeed 100 ohm and they are. So we've got our replacements here. The only difference between these trim pots versus the ones we put in the power amp board is that the legs are reversed. So the wiper uh, leg is backwards instead of forwards. So that's the only difference because we have to match up with the original ones. Now I'm not going to preset these ones because it doesn't really matter because these are for DC offset for the preamp. We can just sort of shove these ones in and calibrate them once they're in there. So yeah, just going to load these in and uh, see what else we can deal with while we're in here.
Now I've decided after replacing those trim pots, I'm gonna remove this switch and this switch, which is the loudness and the tone control switches. Um, speaker switch doesn't really matter because that just activates a relay at the back, so it's not actually in the signal path. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take these two out and clean them because they are scratchy and crackling a bit. So yeah, let's get those out from the back and we'll have a look at them. Okay, we're going to attempt to <laughs> clean this switch. Uh, a disclaimer for everyone, be careful doing this if you decide to attempt this. There's sort of no going back once you open them up. Uh, I have done a similar switch style not that long ago and it wasn't fun. I have a feeling this one's going to be the same. I know that there is a, a spring in here because it's latching, so something has to push it out. And it has like slide contacts, I believe. So yeah, we're gonna crack this open, but be warned that you could destroy the switch doing this and I don't really recommend doing it. So we're going to zoom in on the switch. The first thing we have to do is um, remove the top plate which is pretty straightforward you just got to straighten these out very carefully and you should be able to just pry it off once it's ready to go like that and this switch is made by Alps all right Put that aside. Now this switch has three tabs by the looks of it. So I'll try and open this up very gently. That's it, that's the latching portion of it. We can just put that aside. We're not going to need that for a while. So there is, I'm not sure, that looks like grease, but I think it's oil. So yeah, we're gonna try and get this open. We're gonna be careful, because I bet there's a spring in here. So I'm gonna hold this down while I open it and very gently pull it apart. Oh, look at that, there's a spring. Now I'm assuming this has fingers in it, which it does. So we've gotta be careful with these. These are incredibly fragile and I'm going to just drop them in some alcohol and let them sit for a while while we work on the rest of this unit. These things just want to launch everywhere, so be careful. Very careful. All right, so we've got those just sort of simmering away. Um, I'm gonna put a bit of deoxid in there actually, mix it together. Put the spring aside, put the plate aside. So it's got like a spring for this plate 
and we can put all that off to one end. And here we have the, I'm gonna stand up so I can show you this, the bottom, and there's definitely some tarnishing in there. I don't know if I can show you properly. Maybe a bit of light will help. Yeah, so just a bit of oxidization. Not great. Not really bad either. But yeah, so what I would normally do is I would reach for my deoxit red uh, in the concentrate and I would get into all these fingers. Just soak it. Now, in case you were wondering how this switch actually works, I probably should have explained it. You've got four um, sort of tongs that sort of grab onto these, these pins. Actually, I suppose you call these the fingers more than anything. These are sort of just the contacts. And basically, they will overlap two sets of contacts and they will sort of slide depending on the position of the switch. So you've got basically four positions on here. Oh, not four positions, sorry, four sets of contacts. So you've got one here, one here, one there, one there, and they're all center, center pins. And depending on the switch location, it'll bridge that pin or that pin, and it'll do that. It's just basically mirrored across all of them. So yeah, it'll just move across and latch that one, or it'll move across and latch that one. And they'll all do the same thing so it's good for like left and right channel in this case because it's balanced. So you've got four sets of contacts you need to switch. So yeah, that's, um, I don't know if I explained that very well, but that's how it works. So I'm going to get in with a brush and gingerly, gently scrub these contacts. The fun part is not cleaning this, the fun part is getting this thing back together because that spring is a nightmare from what I remember. So I'm going to try the same trick I used on the last one I had to do. Alright, so we've got this clean. Um, not sure if you can see the contacts. They're quite good. Can we get a bit closer? Yeah, that'll work. I'm pretty happy with that. So we just put some deoxid gold on there, which is um, this one. I really like this stuff. And basically what we have to do is load this cartridge back in with the spring and all of those little fingery things, which is um, really fun. So... What I learnt last time I had to do this, and this is pretty similar, maybe a bit smaller, is we need to put the spring in first, like this. And then we try to load this cartridge back in. Now, this is going to be tricky for sure. I'm going to try to get this on camera but um, not easy. You'll know when you've got it in because um, it won't want to just jump out at you. Like that, look at that. All right, um, it's in. <laughs> like I said, I urge caution with this because it's really tricky. And you can see it's sort of springing now. And it's not trying to launch the plate out of the holder. So we know it's seated correctly. 
this is where the fun begins because we've got to put all these things back in. Now, the best way I've found to do this is to load them in one at a time. So we, we keep pressure on it, we lift up the back end, and we can start loading these in one at a time. I've tried doing this the other way, and you can just end up bending them into weird shapes. So I sort of just do that, guide it in a little bit, and that wants to go in, so we're good there. Grab another one, very gently. Did I mention that this is really difficult? Because I don't think I did enough times yet. Be careful. And that one went in straight away. Now, push that back down. And we're good. <laughs> now we've got to do the front side. Very carefully. So th this little um, cartridge, the white cartridge, has little pockets in there to hold these little sets of fingers so they won't they only go in one spot you don't have to worry about locating them you just have to get them under into the loop into the little grooves and they'll find their home and they sort of self-center so there's no issues there i find the hardest part with this is not damaging these damn fingers I go off camera, I apologize. I'm a bit focused right now. Whew, like that. One loaded in. I find the syringe tips are really good for this because you can sort of just wedge it and guide it in like that. And then once you get it in position, you can use the pressure of this carrier to put it down. And that is it. They're all back in. Whew. So we've got to sit this in. It's got to sit like that. That's a better way of doing it, I think. And then we can put this on. And that's what we should be getting. I hope I didn't bore everyone with this, but I thought I'd just show you what it takes to actually service a switch rather than just spraying it with deoxit, which is doesn't always work with certain switches like these that are pretty much sealed. There's not really any way in but yeah um, obviously we've got to put that metal plate back on which I, I already did uh, but I'll just show you how I normally do it I normally just grab it with some really nice pliers and just crush those ends back together and that's usually enough nothing to really worry about there make sure it still works my final test for these switches or when I do any switch before I go trouble of putting it back in is I want to test the operation of it so what should happen is it should jump from if you're looking at this switch from every 
set of um, contacts, it should jump the uh, should join the center pin to either end, like I described before. So we can check that with continuity on a multimeter. It's a little difficult with not many hands, but we can. So yeah, that's working. We're all good there. So I normally just run down all the contacts and check them. And I won't bore you with that, but that's the process. So check every, so you got four sets to check. As long as they're all good and they're all switching from one side to the other, you can put it back in. All right. Um, I've decided I'm going to take out this power supply while it's apart because I can see some corrosion on the pins. Well, maybe not corrosion, more like oxidization. But we're going to get this out. And the only reason I'm a little hesitant to remove this is there's just so many wire colors that are reused. But I think we can do this if we're very careful. So let's um, get this out and... Uh, start working on it. Now, the reason I wanted to get this board out is those contacts like they're really not good so yeah we are going to try and clean all these pins i don't know how successful we'll be i think we can do a pretty good job of them uh restore those and i think we're going to redo the thermal compound <laughs> on every one of these which i'm not looking forward to uh i'm over thermal compound but this board's out and we may as well do it. So we're gonna do it. Let's get this done. All right, so that all went well. What a pain in the butt that was. I'm not. I'm over thermal paste. I hope we don't have to do any more for this amp. This is just a crazy power supply. It's like got parallel diodes for each side of a, a tr traditional rectifier, but it also has rectifiers here, so I'm not exactly sure what this whole deal is, but we're just gonna leave it alone. We're not gonna mess with it anymore. All I'm going to do now is wash this, Pete, this, atrocious PCB it looks absolutely disgusting and I'm going to attempt to reflow some of this garbage soldering that was done here so I've loaded the big tip into my inductive iron 
and we're going to see if we've got the stones to reflow these joints. Uh, I have a feeling that I do because this iron is amazing. Nothing like a clean PCB. Just um, oh, just comes out amazing. It looks so much better than what it did before. Glad I did it. Don't want to do it again. But um, yeah, <laughs> don't worry about the top side. I'm just deoxiding all those connectors at the moment. Finish that up and then we're going to put it back in. I just thought I'd show you what lurks beneath. So here's the bottom of the capacitor tray, all copper again, bypass caps galore in here. Very nice, very nice. I don't know what these ones are. I believe they're um, poly, not polypropylene, polystyrenes, I believe. Um, never seen them before. Those are just really cool as well. So yeah, just thought you might wanna see that because I'll probably never see it again. Gonna get this back in now and fire it up and see what happens. All right, power supply is back in. Um, thank you, wire memory, because uh, putting this back together wouldn't have been very fun if the wires weren't roughly where they were originally. Um, yeah, definitely not fun, but it's all working. I've tested it and we're all good. So power supply is done, amp modules are done, we've done the preamp, like just a few switches, we've done the pots. We're done. Um, the only thing I wanted to show you before we close this out um, is the input board. We're not doing anything in here, but I thought you might just want to see it for the curiosity sake. There's um, not a lot going on. <laughs> There are Elna capacitors in, in here. Those are the red ones, and they're called Starget. I've never heard of these capacitors before. I even had to look them up. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, can, I can't even focus on them. But uh, there's a couple. Oh, here we go. There's one there that says um, Starget. Very weird. Uh, we've got four Nishikon capacitors in here. And just some film capacitors. There's there's not much to really talk about. There is the uh, uh, ribbon sort of pull cable that's doing the phono switching, and then you've got the moving magnet, moving coil button down here. They're more of those ALP switches, but bigger versions with the sliding contacts, and that sort of metal cable just physically pulls the switch without moving it to the front of the amp and just sort of like remote switching. It's very cool. They've been doing that before there was relays and things and that sort of stuff was more accessible. No problems there. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna button this back up. There's nothing to really change. There's no heat related issues that I can see in there. So we're gonna call this one done. Um, I was going to do all the adjustments in this video, but I've decided that the third and final video for this amp, or for the restoration anyway, will be dedicated just to the adjustments and I'll take you through what every adjustment is, how they work and how to do them because the service manual manual is shit. Okay, <laughs> don't even bother with it. I'll uh, take you through what I've learned with it and yeah. Hope you enjoyed another video on this amp and we'll be back with the final installment.